Welcome, happy new year. This is our first class of the year of 2022. Welcome to our 75 minute burn it off class. So today's intention is to keep things flowing. Typically we do a 45 second um, uh, circuit and then a 15 second recovery. Sometimes the recoveries are a little bit longer than 15 seconds, but today we're really gonna try to stick to it so we can keep that heart rate kind of nice and elevated, but not so much that we feel completely breathless, but enough that we feel like we're created some heat and we've kept it nice and fluid throughout the whole practice today. 45 minutes will be centered around our circuit. 30 minutes will be centered around a nice vinyasa flow that we're going to finish our, our day off or our session with today. Please make sure that your area is clear of any trip hazards. Make sure you have water. Make sure you have your dumbbells accessible. If you are what is staying with us for the yoga practice, if you have yoga blocks, that's handy. I always love to have them accessible. And also make sure you have something nice and cozy with at the end for our Shavasana because we're going to need it for a nice long Shavasana at the end today. So we're going to start off with a nice warm up. Make sure that you honor your body and listen to it. And the moment it is in right now, not the one you had yesterday, not the one you might have tomorrow, but the one you have right now. So we're going to start off with a couple of nice centering breaths, feet hip distance apart. We're going to take a nice big inhale as you sweep the arms overhead, take a nice big breath. And then exhale, release the hands, bend into the knees and breathe in. And breathe out, and breathe in, and breathe out. Last one, breathe in. We're gonna keep those arms extended overhead, nice and long through the spine. Let's release the right arm down to the side, nice little lateral bend. Breathe in, take the right arm up, left arm reaches down to the side, lateral bend to the other side. One more time, reach up, right arm down, reach up, left arm down. Beautiful. Take both arms, extend them up overhead. Let's sweep the arms behind us. Roll the shoulder blades back and down. Open up the heart. Release the shoulder blades back and down. Let that chest expand and open up. Beautiful. Fantastic. Release the hands forward. Interlace the fingers. Press the palms away. Drop the chin. Release the back of the neck. Relax those shoulders. Fantastic. Lift the chin, release the arms. Go ahead and shake those hands out. Roll those shoulder blades back. Nice job. Let's go ahead. We're going to take our feet hip distance apart. We're going to go down for some squats just to loosen up the joints here. Here we go. Down and up. Make sure that when you come into those squats, your knees are behind your toes. As with any workout that you do, whether it's with me, whether it's with uh, someone else or on your own, please make sure you honor what feels right for you. Your range of motion, not the one I'm doing, not the one someone else might be doing, but the one that works for you. This is your journey, right? Beautiful. Nice and long through the back. Bend into those hips. Bend into those knees. Press into the heels. Nice job. I like these ones because they kind of oil up the joints a little bit. Beautiful. Stay with me here. Fantastic. Let's continue for another five, four, beautiful, three, two, last one. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and release those hands. We're going to go into some little kickbacks here. Karate chop from the hips, bend into the knees, hands rest at the hips, right leg back only. Here we go. Back and forward. So a little hip extension here. Just working the back side of the body. Back is long. Pull the core in slightly enough to keep that pelvis nice and neutral. Square off those shoulders. Keep the chest open. Beautiful. A little bit of balance work on that left knee. Fantastic. Stay with me here for another 15 more seconds. So when are we do our warm up? Warm-ups are about building heat, mental preparation, not here to kill it, right? That's not the intention. Four, three, two, one. Come back through center, release the legs. Go ahead, karate chop in, bend into the knees, other side. So if your warm-ups automatically bring your heart rate up and your 
feeling this really big demand in breath, take it down a notch. We're gonna build into it. Sometimes an uptick in breathing is kind of like a, an initial reaction. So first get that breath under control, see if you can get that settled, then move into it a little bit, maybe slower, and then move yourself into that nice progressive increase of intensity. But we don't have to go in so heavy, so hard right away, right? Just take your time, listen to your body. Good, we got five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's go ahead and march it out here. All right, nice big movements of the arms, big lifts of the knees here. Nice job. I like to think of myself as climbing up a really nice steep hill here. I'm using my arms with some momentum here, pulling up the knees to use those core muscles. Beautiful. Keep that smile on. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> Beautiful. Fantastic. We're going to be here for another 15 more seconds. Then we're going to do a little bit of lateral work. Fantastic. Beautiful. Looking great, Susan. Looking great, Jane. Tony, David, Susan, Jean. I don't know if Susan's with you, David, but if she is, please say hello. All right. Stay with me for three, two, one. Go ahead. Land both feet. Karate chop from the hips one more time. Bend it from the knees. This time, alternating sides. I am going to add a little jump to this but this is optional. Everything I offer as extra is there for you to take, there for you to leave, right? And none, not one is better than the other. So remember that you choose what works for you. Beautiful. All right, so we're gonna keep either our lateral bends here or we're gonna take it into a little hop and a skip, if you will. <laughs> All right, here we go in three, two, one. Here we go, a hop and a hop, a hop and a hop. Takes a little bit of coordinating, so a little skip and a skip and a skip and a skip. Nice job. Again, just building some heat here, adding a little cardio component to increase that heart rate increase that heat i want this to feel nice and settling here so if it feels a bit awkward just get that coordination once you get that don't think too much about it you'll find the rhythm we're here for another 15 more seconds <sighs> hips are back step and skip good all right if you're doing set lateral little step outs i want the knees bent and i want the hips kicked back slightly get those glutes and hamstrings in there three two, one, and bring it back to center, march it out. Nice job, beautiful, fantastic work, awesome. All right, keep those arms, legs marching, arms out, strong T, arm circles, mini circles here, tiny, tiny circles. We're gonna go from small to medium to large. Relax the shoulders. So as you're marching, knees are pulling up, arms are extended. Maybe if it reaches to that T, it doesn't feel good, but you want to come down here because that feels better on the shoulder. You got this. You could do that. All right, let's take that circle into a medium-sized circle here. Arms are out. Strong T. Relax that upper body. Remember, you could take a break anytime. Anytime. All right, big circles, big circles. Keep marching. You've got it. I'm proud of you guys. Fantastic. Now we're gonna reverse our circle, large, medium to small this time. Stay with me for five. We're gonna reverse the direction. Three, two, one, here we go. Other direction. So if you've taken a break, over the last couple of weeks of doing any sort of fitness. That's okay. So we're gonna to come to this with a lot of kindness to ourselves, right? We're gonna be gentle, we're gonna listen, we're gonna tune it, and we're gonna take it one step at a time, medium-sized circle. So we're gonna listen in, we need a break, we take it. We wanna push it harder, we go for it. But you listen to that. 
that little voice in your in your gut, not your head, because your head's gonna tell you something different. All right, small circles for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Release those arms, walk it out. A little bit more of a vigorous walk up this hill for 15 seconds. Beautiful. We're nearing the end of our warm up. We're gonna get a warm up. We're gonna get right into our main set next. Beautiful. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Fantastic. Bring those feet down. Let's go ahead and grab some water. All right. So the first round we're going to be doing is going to be some squats with some front raises. So again, if you don't have weights at home, no big deal at all. You could totally do this with just your body weight. So if you're not doing this with weights, we're going to go to a squat with an arm reach. I'm going to bring my arms to about shoulder height as I come into my squat. Now you'll notice as I'm coming to my squat, my knees are behind my toes. My back is long. My hips are kicked back. My arms I'm not straining here. I'm going to keep them around here and then I'm going to press myself up. If you're using weights, we'll bring it so that our palms are facing our body and then we're going to reach up, same movement, and then lift. All right, let's get ready. 45 seconds on, 15 second transition. Next effort we're going to be doing is a lunge with a shoulder press. All right, here we go in three, two, one, let's go. Now, I want to stress to you the importance of keeping your core engaged. When we're not so engaged with our core, our back has to kick in because it needs the support. And it was interesting. Last week, skiing with my family, I had a day where at the end of the day, I felt my back. And I was like, oh my goodness. What was I doing? I did not clearly use my core at all. I kind of paid for it the day after. All right, five. So make sure you've got some good and core engagement. Three, two, and one. Rest. Fantastic, everyone. Beautiful. All right. The next effort we're going to be doing is going to be a lunge with a shoulder press. We're going to do 10 on one side, 10 on the other. That should take us about 45 seconds or so. So starting at the top of our mat, you just need one weight. If you don't have weights, again, just body weight. We're gonna take our right foot back. We're gonna hold in an isometric lunge. So if you don't have any weights, two options for you. You could do some dynamic movement with the arm just to get that sense, or you could just focus on lower body and do some little gentle dips here in those lunges. You choose. All right, here we go. 10 of them. Three, two, one. Here we go. One, two. So here I'm coordinating shoulder press with a lunge. Back is long. Four, five, six. You've got it. Seven, eight, nine. Last one. 10. Fantastic. Let's take that right foot forward, left foot back. Same thing on the other side. Get yourself situated with your lunge. Front knee stacks on top of the ankle. Three, two, one. Here we go. One, two, three. You've got it. Four, five. I'm dropping down that bottom knee, back knee. Not down to the four. Eight, nine. Last one. Ten and rest. Fantastic. Excellent work. Beautiful. All righty. So. Next, grab some water if you need it. You take a little water break here. Then we're going to be going into some chest, some standing bent elbow flies. So you'll start at a 90 degree angle. Again, you don't have to do this with weights, just your body weight. We're going to open, we're going to close. We're going to open, we're going to close. All right, 90 degrees, three, two, one, here we go. Open to about shoulder height and then lower. Open and lower. That looks great. Beautiful. So raise those arms, maybe elbows to about shoulders. You'll see how that feels. Well, obviously, 
the heavier you go on the resistance, the more your shoulders are gonna work, the higher you go as well with your elbows, the more your upper traps are gonna work as well. But we're working the latissimus dorsi as well. So focus on the underarm here as you press down, get those back muscles in there, 10 seconds to go. Looking great, <sighs> fabulous. Three, two, one, and rest. Excellent job, beautiful, fantastic, awesome. Alrighty, next we're gonna be going into some rows with some kickbacks. So we did the kickbacks in our warm up. Now we're gonna incorporate a little bit of upper body. Again, if we're not using weights, we're gonna still do that motion of the row even though we don't have weight, so it's no big deal. So karate chop from your hips, back is long, knees are bent, palms are gonna be facing one another. As we're gonna kick back, we're gonna row. Back to center, row, back to center. All right, here we go. So this is the beautiful thing about these types of efforts. If you wanna add a little umph to it, you're feeling a little bit energetic today, you got some good rest over the holidays. You wanna add a little bit more spice to it, add tempo, add a little weight. If you had a funky night's sleep last night, <laughs> I kinda had one of those nights. Still woke up feeling great, but maybe I slow it down a bit. You choose. Three, two, one. Nice job and rest. Excellent work. Fantastic. Excellent. All right. So next, we're going to be doing just some upper body. We're going to do a bicep curl to press to overhead extension. We're going to be doing a little bit of three way efforts here. So we're going to grab our weights. So if you're not using any weights today, what I'm gonna suggest you do is just to do some dynamic movement with your own arms here. Just kind of kicking back into some tricep kickbacks here, because doing this, oh, it's some good movement. If you wanna add on to that, you could do that as well. You choose, if you can't, if you don't have weights, just do some tricep kickbacks with those, with your arms, with your body weight, all right? Here we go. So we're gonna do some bicep curls to press ups, tricep kickback, up, and then down and down, okay? So bicep curl, press up, tricep kick back, lift, lower, lower. Here we go, we're on. Beautiful, nice job. So if we're doing this as a dynamic movement, meaning we're not using weights, we're just using the strength of our own muscles, I want you to extend those arms and really fire up those triceps the muscles in the back of the arms. Beautiful. We are 20, we're 15 seconds out. We're almost there. Beautiful. Beautiful. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one and rest excellent work fantastic job excellent all righty now we are going to take it down to the floor we're going to be doing a little bit of core work next but i'm going to add in a little bit of spice there you can take that spice you can leave that spice it is entirely up to you so we're going to make our way into our all fours position to start and then i'm going to add on that little alternative option so let's bring ourselves down to the floor hopefully if you do have some um, hard floor surface underneath you. You've got maybe a blanket underneath your knees to make sure that your knees are nice and soft and comfortable. So all fours position, option number one is going to be a spinal balance with a knee to chest, elbow to knee. So right arm, left leg, extend, and then we're gonna pull it in. We're gonna alternate this. So this, oops, this is option number one is elbow to knee, you're kind of coming into a bit of a cat pose as you come into that crunch. Option number two is to go into mountain climbers. I'm gonna do mountain climbers for this first round. So hands are gonna be forward, legs are gonna be extended, knees are gonna pull in. All right, you choose what works best for you. All right, here we go, three, two, one, let's do it. 
make sure if you're doing mountain climbers at home, shoulders, elbows, wrists are nicely aligned. As I'm pulling in my knees, I'm really working my core. Whether you're doing spinal balance or mountain climbers, you wanna work that core round and through that spine. Pull those muscles in towards the back of the room. Nice job. Fantastic. You've got it. 15 seconds to go. Good, core work, so important to keep that core strong. It's the center, right? It's the center, it's, it's, our, it's our hub. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Nice job, rest. Press back onto your heels, give your hips and your back a little break and your wrists. Excellent work. All right, let's come back into our all fours. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a different effort today. We're gonna do a little upper body hover. And these might seem really simple, but actually they're pretty challenging. So hands are underneath our elbows and shoulders, knees underneath our hips, back is long, core is turned on. Now I want you, without weighing into the left side of your body, I want you to lift that right arm right out to that 90 degree angle. And just keep everything here. Notice how there's this inclination to maybe weigh into that left arm and left leg. But I want you to focus on keeping knees equally distributed here. Left arm pressing to the floor. That right arm is gonna turn the core on. Beautiful, hold for five, four. And we're gonna release and set up the other arm. Three, two, one. Let's release that right arm back through center. Lengthen out that right arm, left arm, sorry. Just come up to 90 degrees here. Make sure you're weighed into both knees. Don't lean into that right side. Just notice how it turns the core on. Uh, for me, it's like instantaneous. I feel it right away in my core. Make sure you're not arching through that back. Keep your core muscles really fired up. Beautiful. Stay here for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Fantastic. Excellent work. Let's swing those legs over to the side and let's make our way onto our back. All right. So lying down on our back with our knees 90 degrees. You can leave your feet flat to the floor. You could bring your knees up to 90 if that feels okay for you. So if this feels all right and you don't feel like you're gonna arch into that low back, bring the legs up. If not, please set your feet down to the floor. Hands are gonna rest behind the head. Elbows are wide. Relax the shoulders. We're going into our chest lifts. Inhale, lengthen the back of the neck. Exhale, lift. Inhale, back down to the floor. Exhale, lift. Inhale, lower. All right, this is gonna be our effort for the first part. Then we're gonna kick out the legs. Again, optional. If you wanna take it, leave it if you don't wanna take it. All right, let's get ready in five, four, three, two, one. Now, as we're gonna lift, we're gonna lift up. Knees are gonna come in towards forehead. We're gonna lengthen out the legs and then pull it in. Nice and steady here. Maybe. You're not fully extending the legs. You're just getting this motion. You want to keep that core really supported. <sighs> Beautiful. You've got it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And rest. Excellent job. Beautiful. Feet down to the ground. Beautiful. Next, we're gonna go into our chest lifts with rotation, our oblique crisscross. Here we go. Lift the back of the head, exhale, rotate right chest towards left, back to base. Alternate sides. Beautiful, I want you to lift that chest towards the thigh. Fantastic work. Beautiful. Beautiful, 20 seconds in. Now remember, just like our marches, very similar, except that we're not, when we do our marches standing, we're not flexing into our upper body. 
but we're using the core. 10 seconds left. So I want you to remember that. Use the core to lift the knee up. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Excellent work, everyone. Beautiful. That was our main set. We're going to rinse, wash, and repeat two more times. However you want to get up, get up. Let's go ahead and we're going to take a 30 second recovery. Then we're going to get right back in. Second round. As with anything, please make sure you make adjustments. This is your burn it off class. So I want you to decide, is today the day you're going to take it up a notch? Maybe you're going to pick up your tempo. Maybe you're going to even focus just on your posture just that little bit more, okay? All right. So we're going to start off. Front raises with squats. Whether you're using weights or not, no problem. You choose. All right, let's go ahead and get what we need. 45, 15 second transition and recovery time in four, three, two, one. Here we go. Excellent work. Make sure your core is on, bend into those knees, hips back, 10 to go. Come on, we got it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Rest, excellent work, beautiful, fantastic. All right, next we've got our lunges with our shoulder presses, 10 on the right, 10 on the left. Let's take that right foot back, left foot forward, elbows up, here we go. Three, two, one. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got it. Ten. All right. Let's switch it up. Right foot forward, left foot back. Track that knee above that ankle. Here we go. Three. Two, one, let's go. One, two, three, four. You've got it. Five, six, seven, almost there. Eight, nine, that's it. Ten, and rest. Excellent work. Beautiful, fantastic. All righty. We're back to our standing. Bent elbow flies, feet hip distance apart, soft through the knees, three, two, one. Here we go, open and close. That's it. Now remember, take it one effort at a time. We have to, because if we look at the mountain and all we see, is this giant heap of rock in front of us. It's gonna feel impossible to climb, right? You have to take it one little effort at a time, one step at a time. So if we need a break, you take it. Six seconds to go. Three, two, one, and rest. Excellent job, beautiful. All right, shoulders back, 10 seconds. We're gonna get into those rows with our step backs. Shoulders back, let's go ahead and kick those hips back, bend into the knees. Elbows, wrists are facing each other. Three, two, one, row. Alternate sides. You got it, beautiful. Now, what are you doing? Are you popping through your chest here as you're alternating? Again, just kind of work through that. That's it, Susan, you've got it. Keep those knees bent, hips back. Row, fantastic, 20 seconds. Beautiful, come on. You've got this, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest, excellent job. Fantastic, well done, beautiful. So grab a little water break. We got our bicep curls, 
shoulder presses to tricep overhead extensions next. All right, you ready? All right, here we go. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. In three, two, one, up, press, overhead. So if we're doing this without weights, remember we're doing those tricep kickbacks. So we're just gonna do that dynamic movement with our arms with no weights, right? Bend into those knees, all right? If you prefer to do that over doing this overhead work, no problem, right? No problem. Beautiful, 15 seconds. Fantastic, 10, nine, Woo. beautiful work. Five, four, three, two, and one, and rest. Excellent job, beautiful. All right, we're already back at core again. Fly, fly, flies through it, that's great. All right, we're gonna make our way back down to the floor again for some spinal balance with alternating knee pull-ins back into that all fours position. Let's come down to the floor. So just as a reminder, you know, when we start something new, at first it seems really hard, or if we're coming back to it after taking a little break, initially it's gonna feel like it's kicking our bum a little bit. But as we continue to do it, it starts to feel better. So one step at a time. All right, round two, this is not new to our body. It's gonna remember what we're gonna do. Alternate sides, arm to knee, set it back down. Take your time with it, breathe in, and alternate sides or you'll come into mountain climbers with me here we go you choose 45. so this past week my son's girlfriend had never skied before and she came to spend a week with us and she got on those skis and she literally took it one turn at a time by the end of the seventh day she was zipping down that mountain she was to watch her just flying down confident but initially it was scary and it took effort five four three two one it's no different with this right it's no different all right come back into all fours we're going to go into those hovers hands underneath the shoulders. I want core engaged. I also want your shoulders pressed against the rib cage. Starting with that right arm, extend it out to that 90 degrees. Pull the core in, just hold with me. Now this might seem like a nothing effort. For me, it's a lot of work. I feel it right away in my core. I can feel my core wanting to balance me out here. And what we're working on is just some core stabilization here. Hold that for another six, five. We're going to switch over to the other side in three, two, one. Set it down, other side. So if core work is kind of been elusive for a bit or you've taken a bit of break from it, it's a nice way just to get back into it. Pull that core in, stack the head on top of the spine. We've got 12, 10, five, four, three, two, one. Set that arm down, fantastic, well done. All right, let's go ahead and swing those legs over to the side. We're gonna come onto our back. We're gonna go right into our chest lifts. So for those of you who, I think all of you have probably heard me say neutral spine, but just a reminder, when you're down on your back and your legs are either down to the floor, your feet are on the floor, or your legs are up, you wanna keep that natural curve in the back here. You don't want your pelvis tilting down and flattening that low back. In order to strengthen the core, you wanna keep that pelvis neutral, and that's gonna make you work even more in that rectus abdominis muscle group. Hands resting behind the head. Inhale, lengthen the back of the neck. Exhale, lift. 
Maybe your feet are down and your knees are bent. Remember, we're just gonna ease ourselves in. Like that first mountain, Katie went down. She took it one step at a time. I want us to take it one step at a time. So if keeping the legs up feels like it's too much, keep the feet down, bend the knees. All right, we're gonna go ahead and lift and extend the legs out. Here we go. Knees in, if you take this, and extend the legs out. You don't have to continue with those chest lifts. This is optional. This is one of those efforts that you've gotta be really careful. You're not using your back here or arching through your pelvis to lift or extend those legs. Three, two, and one, and rest. Fantastic. Set those feet down to the floor. Well done, beautiful. All right, chest lifts with rotation. Let's go ahead and get it done. This time I'm gonna take my legs up though. If you wanna keep your feet down and just alternate knees to chest, go for it. Here we go, three, two, one, alternate sides. Remember we're not rocking like a boat here. I want you stable through that sacrum. Beautiful, nice work, 15 seconds in. Your chin might want to cram into the chest here. I want you to lift that chin. I want you to make sure that the lift is coming chest to thigh. Beautiful. Almost there. 10 seconds left. You've got it. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Excellent work. Beautiful job. Excellent. All right, last round, we're gonna plow through this and then we are done and we can move right into our yoga practice with perfect timing. I'm so happy about that. All right, let's get right back to the top. When you're ready, come up to standing. Let's get into those squats with front raises. We'll take a 30 second transition here. And we're gonna move right into those front raises with the chest, uh, with the squats. All right, everyone. Last round, and then we get to move into our yoga practice. I'm so excited. Alrighty, nice and tall through the spine. Let's get ready in six, in four, three, two, one. Here we go, feet hip distance apart, reach and lift. So squats, <laughs> you know, squats are, I don't mind them, but they're actually, they're so functional, right? How many times are we bending down in a day? But when it comes to doing them in exercise, <laughs> it feels a little different. But remember, we do this all day long. We're constantly bending down. So it's so good to keep those quads, hamstrings, and glutes strong this is a great exercise for it three two one and rest excellent job beautiful all right back into those lunges with the shoulder presses right arm right foot back knee on top of ankle 10 whether you're doing this with weights or not you choose three two one here we go one two Three, this is a great quad strengthener for the front. Also gives it a little bit of stretch through the hip here. Three, two, one more left. One, and rest. Fantastic, switch sides. Right foot forward, left foot back. Set yourself up for success here. Elbow, shoulder height. Three, two, one, let's go. One, two, you've got it three, four, that's it, five, five, six, seven, we're almost there, eight, nine, that's it, ten, and rest, excellent work, high five, good job everyone, all righty, shake that out, we got those 90 degree elbow bends in five, four, three, two, 
ones. Here we go. Elbow flies. Great work for those shoulders. Beautiful. So Susan, right now you've got some tricep work that you're doing. That's great. If you want to do that or you want to work those shoulders. No, okay. That's cool. All good. Beautiful. Excellent. 20 seconds. I love that. Right? That's tuning in. That's awesome. Beautiful. Stay with me. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Rest. Excellent work. Beautiful. All righty. Next, we're going to go right into our step backs with our rows. And we're doing our bicep curls after that. And then we're back on the floor. And then we get right into our yoga practice. Shoulders back. Cry chop from the hips. Bend it from the knees. Three, two, one. Here we go. Again, if we're avoiding the arms, maybe set those hands at the side or at our hips. Do those kickbacks. Open up the hip. Work those quads. Work those glutes. That's it. 20 seconds in. You got it. Fifteen seconds left. Keep it going. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Excellent work. Beautiful. All right. The last one for the standing work that we're going to do before we come down to the floor for core, we're going to bring our bicep curl, shoulder press, tricep overhead extension, or tricep kickback. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, let's do it. You want to try to tuck in those elbows as much as you can. You also, when you're doing those tricep overhead extensions or anytime your arms are overhead, be careful for your core here, right? So what I have to be careful for, what a lot of people have to be careful for is that desire to arch the back to facilitate this overhead movement. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, nice job everyone. Woo, and rest, excellent work. Hey, we're already at the floor again. We got four more efforts and then we're done. Let's go ahead and make it down to the floor so we can get right into our yoga practice. All right, down onto all fours. We're gonna go into mountain climbers or those spinal balances with those knee pulling, alternating sides. Make sure that core muscles are engaged. Let's get ready in five four, three, two, one. Here we go. I'm, I'm forgetting. I'm doing a plank. <laughs> I just went into it. I'm like, no, there's something missing here. I should be moving. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. 20 seconds left. So last week, I uh, was invited to join my husband along with some other riders for some fat tire biking. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Set those knees down, press back onto your heels. And so cycling is one of the things I really love to do. It's kind of where I started my fitness journey, my fitness training journey as a trainer was in the indoor cycling world. All right, let's go ahead and do our hovers. Rest your weight into your left hand, not with, sorry. Weight into the left hand, but not everything. Knees are equal, right arm extends. So fat tire biking is tires that are very, very large and they, they roll on snow and mud and things like that. And so you can ride outdoors in the winter. And so my husband bought me one this year and I've gotten a chance to ride it a few times and last week was invited to join a bunch of seasoned riders and I was nervous 
Go ahead, set that right arm down. Go ahead, immediately extend that left arm. I was really nervous actually because these guys ride hardcore and I was worried I was gonna be in the back of the pack and they were gonna be waiting for me and I didn't want that. So I get there and a bunch of guys are there and I'm like, guys, I'm just gonna hang around the back. I, it's good. And then when this other guy says, no, 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 that's where I hang out. I'm like, yeah, but I know you're gonna be faster than me. He's like, no, 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 I'm not. Go ahead and rest. Fantastic, good job. Take those legs forward, lie on our backs. And so this really nice guy, who's actually a neighbor of ours, I just met him last week. He's riding behind me. And of course, you know, you have this desire to have to really push it hard because you kind of know in your head, he could probably go faster. Hands behind the head, 90 degrees if you want to take it. Let's get going. Three, two, one. And so I'm, I'm pushing way out of my comfort zone. And about 65% of the way through, we were kind of switching spots sometimes. I'd go in the back, sometimes he'd go in the back. With these bikes, you can't really run super fast cause, just because of the nature of the terrain. So I was probably at an average pace. And then 65% of the way through, I realized my legs were finished. <laughs> but I had to continue riding. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. Otherwise, we weren't going to get home. All right, let's go ahead and extend the legs if you want to. Pull them in. And that's where I really had to tap into my head and tap into my body. Because the second half, that last 35% that we had left, was the hardest riding really steep riding but I was determined to finish this <laughs> thankfully my husband came and hung out with me in the back five four three two one and rest fantastic all right last one bicycles legs up at 90 or feet down to the floor with the rotations here we go three two one all this to say but I went in there with the mentality of I'm the slowest, not gonna be able to finish this. Almost wanted to stop, but knew I couldn't. And then finished when we got back to the car. And I really had to look at myself and say, You did it, Sharon. It was hard, but you did it. And the reward was so much bigger than I could have imagined. Keep going for five, four three two one and rest nice job so as we're coming back to this new year with new joy new goals new ambitions new things we want to accomplish whether it's fitness related or not it might seem hard at the beginning it might seem hard halfway but when you look back on that journey and you finished it <laughs> or continue to work on it and grow with it yeah there's no amount of money or anything that can give you that feeling in your heart, right? All right, stay seated on the ground. Let's lie down with our backs, knees in towards our chest. And change the music. So as we take a moment here to kind of transition from where we were to where we're going right now. Maybe get yourself comfortable, maybe take your socks off, maybe your shoes off, maybe dim the lights. And I just want you to give yourself a few words, kind words of great job today. You kicked it, you did great. Whatever those words, those positive words, those affirmations, to remind yourself that you showed up, you finished, might have felt ugly, might have wanted to quit, but you finished, you got there. And just take a moment to tune in. Take a moment to tune into your body. 
Maybe you sit your feet down to the floor. Maybe sit your arms down to the side. Maybe you even, if you want to, knock your knees together or extend your legs, whatever feels right. And we're gonna take the next few moments here just to connect in physically with the body and to connect into our breath. Notice how your body feels. Notice any tension. See if you can allow your body to feel nice and heavy into the ground. Notice if you can soften the jaw and the eye. Are you still holding on to tension in the shoulders? Can you let the shoulders drift down and even let your arms, as your shoulders drift down, kind of spray out to the side of your body here. Now let's take a moment just to tune in to our breath. Notice the nature of the temperature, the cadence. Does the breath feel fluid? Does it feel a little bit blocked? Can you expand the breath into the belly and then empty the belly, the ribs, and the heart? Notice what happens to your body when you exhale. Invite the release, the tension, the letting go. Now I'd like you to set your sankalpa. A sankalpa is an intention. An intention isn't necessarily a goal, but rather a state of being a place that you may want to be in, a place where you want to feel into your body. Maybe it's an I am statement, I am calm, speaking about your intention as if you are there already. Or maybe it's more of a mantra or a string of words that are positive, that lift you, that support you. And I'd like you to imagine that you're branding this intention into your brain. And throughout your practice today, come back to this intention and even feel it at a cellular level, deep down into the cell of your body, into each of the muscles, the, the mind, the eyes, the vision, Every part of you is engulfed in this intention. Now, as you're ready, let's go ahead and extend our right leg long down to the floor. Pull the right knee in towards the chest. Draw the knee in. As you inhale, extend the knee away from your body. As you exhale, pull the left knee in. Inhale, pull the left knee away. As you exhale, pull the left knee in. Inhale, and exhale. Breathing in, and breathing out. Let's repeat two more times. Let's release the left foot down to the floor. Pull the right knee in towards your chest. Extend the left leg and rest the heel down to the ground. Same thing, as you exhale, pull the knee in. As you inhale, pull the knee away from your body. And I want you to see if you can do this with as much love and compassion, not force. Inviting opening, inviting release. 
sometimes if we go to it with too much force, it creates tension unnecessarily. What if you were to do this with this intention of only allowing the knee to pull in to a space that feels good, accessible, comfortable, ready for your body? Let's do two more. Extend the breath, release the breath. Go ahead and pull both knees in towards the chest. On our inhale, extend the legs up to the sky. Rest the hands behind the thighs, set the sacrum down, flex into the heels. Heels up to the sky, resting the hands behind the thighs, giving the back of the legs a nice little stretch here. Now it may be tempting to lift the hips, off the ground, but can you set your sacrum down as if it's super glued to the floor, as if you've planted your roots? And all you can do is extend the legs up. Maybe your knees are even bent. Maybe your toes are reaching towards the bottom, towards the floor, your heels up. Taking a moment here just to breathe in, noticing the back of the legs. Fantastic. Go ahead and set your right foot down to the floor. Bend into your left knee. Inhale. Exhale. Draw the right thigh in towards your heart, interlacing the fingers behind the right thigh. Feel free to extend the right leg if you want a little more. Giving our hips a little bit of an opening here, a little opportunity to release. Maybe you release the tailbone down to the floor. Set your right foot down, unwind your left ankle from your right, set your right to your left ankle, oh, oh, left knee, open up the right hip, draw the left thigh in towards your center. Now perhaps bringing the left thigh towards your heart doesn't feel accessible. Remember, maybe just the opening of the right hip, maybe just that simple act of bringing that right ankle over the left is the right amount. It need not be complicated. It need not feel intense. It need only feel good for your body. Beautiful, set your left foot down. Bring your right foot down to the floor. Open up your feet as wide as the mat and let's just gently let the left knee fall in towards center. Right leg flares open towards the right side. Gently pull up through the core here. Keep the core nice and engaged as you gently lift that left hip off the ground. On your next inhale, pull up through center. Let the right knee drift down. Let the left leg fall to the floor. Again, just opening up here, opening up the hip. A little bit of the low back here. I can feel this a little bit into the upper part of my hip. Maybe you feel it in different areas. Beautiful, go ahead and extend the leg, bring the knees up and toe heel the feet so that they're hip distance apart. Bringing the heels in towards a bit more of the glutes, finding that neutral spine, resting the hands down to the floor, pressing the triceps into the floor as we move into our flowing bridges. Pressing into the heels, lifting the sacrum off the floor, opening up the heart. Reaching through the knees, engaging through the back body. Take a big breath here. And then exhale, release the sacrum down to the floor. And we're gonna flow here, so breathe in. Open up the front body, open up the hips, open up the chest, and breathe out and release. And just find your flow here. Maybe if you're looking for a little bit more, you don't come down to the ground, but midway down. How to work from that space. Maybe you take a moment of pause at the base. I'm going to bring mine down to the floor today. Now, as you're doing this, I want you to notice the grounding of the feet into the floor, the energy of the heels. If your toes are lifted, keep them down. Keep the ball of the foot down. Flow with really a nice, gentle rhythm here, keeping the breath one movement with one breath. 
One breath, one movement. Press into the shoulders, keep the shoulder blades wide. Notice the back body here, noticing the glutes working, the spine. Fantastic, let's do two more. And then last one. Beautiful, and then go ahead and set your sacrum whenever you're ready back down to the floor. And let's reset with a little knees to chest here. And maybe on this round, we draw the knees in towards our chest. We lengthen the low back and we rock our body side to side. Spreading the sacrum down into the earth, feeling the massaging of the spine, maybe the back of the head, maybe the back of the shoulders. Beautiful. Wonderful. And then when you're ready, we're going to go ahead and make our way onto our stomach and then into our all fours position. Sorry, just transition right to all fours. My apologies. So back into this familiar space. We've been here before today. Let's go ahead and press the hands into the floor, knees hip distance apart, finding our cat cow. Breathe in as you let the belly drop, open up the heart. Breathe out as you pull the belly in, round through the spine, tuck the chin under. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Let's find one more cat, one more cow. Fantastic. When you're ready, let's go ahead and make our way into that neutral spine. We're going to go ahead and set that right knee down. Take our left foot forward, finding our kneeling lunge opening up the right hip, extend the right arm up to the sky, open up the hip and opening up the psoas here. As our arm reaches up to the sky, pulling into the core, lengthening the spine, gently leaning over towards the left. Exhale, come back through center, release the hand to the floor, open up towards the left with a gentle twist, resting the hand at the thigh. Come back through center, both hands rest on either side of the left foot. Take the left foot back, right foot forward. Set yourself up on the other side, adjust that back foot, set the foot down to the floor, come up, find that kneeling lunge, inhale, take the left arm tall. Gently lean over towards the right side, opening up the side body, relax the shoulders, breathing tall. Come back through center, release the left hand to the floor, set the hand on the thigh, open up with a gentle twist. Come back through center, release the hand to the other side of the right foot. This time we're gonna take that left knee off the ground and we're gonna bring that left foot forward, finding our forward fold. If releasing the head below the heart doesn't feel good, set the knees hands on the sorry the elbows on top of the knees if you can feel comfortable coming below with your heart with your head maybe you let your head release maybe you extend the legs or keep the knees bent slightly release the head shake the head no release the neck release the shoulders you can do this whether you're in a half forward fold maybe shake the head yes Beautiful. 
Go ahead and release your crown of your head and your shoulders. Bend deeply into the knees. Inhale, sweep the arms as you extend your body long. Press into the floor. Reach the hands overhead. Reaching tall with the fingertips reaching towards the sky. Release the right hand down to the side. Find your lateral bend. Inhale, lift right arm. Exhale, release to the other side. Inhale, lift both arms, extend, release down, sweep it all the way to the side, finding our forward fold. Inhale, come into your half arch with your hands resting right below the knee. Exhale, release down to the floor. Inhale, bend the knee, sweep the arms all the way tall, finding our half sun salutation. Reaching tall, exhale, shift the weight into the hips, finding our chair pose, maybe with our arms resting overhead or maybe resting forward or to the hips if our shoulders are feeling a little fatigued today. Inhale, extend the body, reach the fingertips towards the sky, lengthen the arms out, find that lift and pull up towards the sky, lengthening the spine. As we take our next exhale, sweep the arms out to the side, sweeping all the way down to the floor. Find our half arch, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, release down. Inhale, bend the knees, sweep the arms all the way tall. Finding our chair pose, shift the hips back. Reaching the arms or resting them down or reaching them forward. Inhale, press into the legs, extend the arms up towards the sky. Press those palms together and let's come into Samasiti with our hands at heart center finding our intention, reminding ourselves of our intention today. Beautiful. On your next inhale, sweep the arms up towards the sky, reaching them tall, and take the right foot back. We're going to find our crescent pose here. With the arms outstretched, release into that back heel, bend into that front knee, opening up the hip. From here, we're going to transition. Warrior two, adjust the back foot. Arms are outstretched. Bend into that front knee. Release the left hand to the left knee, reaching into our extended side angle. Abs are pulled in, arms are outstretched. Maybe if this reaches, doesn't feel good for the side of the body, you can absolutely reach the arm up to the sky or set the arm out to the right hip. As you're ready, let's rainbow the arm. All right, arm all the way back, finding our warrior two, release the shoulders. Make sure your heels are nicely aligned. Your front knee is bent directly above your ankle. We're gonna inhale, shift forward. Palm is gonna open. Reverse swan dive, reverse, sorry, swan dive. Reverse warrior here. Shoulder of the right arm releases, releases down the hand down towards the back of the leg. Take that left arm. Let's come back into our extended side angle. One more time, reaching maybe. Pulling into the core. Beautiful. Let's take that right arm. Come back to warrior two. And we're going to transition through the center of our mat over to the other side, finding warrior two on the right knee. Excuse my back. I'm going to switch over so that you don't have to see my back. Finding our warrior two here, releasing the arms down. Let's find our extended side angle on the other side, releasing the left arm this time overhead, right elbow into that thigh. Now I want you to make sure that when you're here, you've got some pressure of the right elbow into that thigh. So you've got that nice support through the shoulders. Beautiful. Let's rainbow that left arm through center into that warrior two. Right arm this time is going to shift forward. Palm is going to open. Find our reverse warrior. Open up that side body. Beautiful. Inhale, come right back through center. Finding that warrior two, exhale, right elbow to right thigh. Extend that left arm, find that extended side angle or up to the sky. Beautiful. Let's transition one more time, finding our warrior two. We're going to pivot that left foot, come back into our crescent, release both arms and shoulders down to the floor, finding our plank pose. Take that right foot back, come into plank. From here, Stack those hands underneath the shoulders. Set the knees down to the floor. Elbows are going to kind of hug into the rib cage as we come down into our, our half series here. Shoulders roll back. Lift up through the heart, finding our baby cobra. Finding a little extension, lifting up through the core. 
Exhale, release down towards the floor and let's find child's pose. Press into the hands, knees wide, big toes together. Release the hips down to the heels. Arms may be extended overhead, maybe releasing the hands towards the top of your mat. If you're taking care of your shoulders today, maybe you're not, maybe you're bringing your elbows in a little bit closer to center. Take a moment here to release the low back, to release the hips. Maybe you set your forehead down to the floor. Maybe you stack the hands like a little tower of fists to raise the floor to meet your forehead. Breathing into the back body. And I want you to take a moment here just to breathe in a few times with this intention of surrender. Surrendering the mind of its movement, surrendering the body, releasing any expectation, any judgment. From here, let's go ahead and tense the hands and I'd like you to lift the heel of your hand off the ground, but keep those fingertips down and pressing energetically into the floor. We're gonna lift the forehead a few inches off the floor as we walk the hands over to the left side, taking that right arm, maybe an inch or so further of the left, opening up the side rib cage here, pressing down to the right hip. Beautiful, walk the hands through center. Other side, take that left hand a little forward of the right. Beautiful, then come back through center and shift your weight forward, finding your all fours. And let's come down to the floor onto our backs. Bring our knees in towards our chest one last time. Maybe from here, you'd like to come into a happy baby. And that's where we take maybe the peace fingers and we grab hold of the large toe or we set the hands right behind the thighs, flex into the heels. And what makes this a happy baby is the rocking. So maybe rock your body side to side, let your hips just open. Maybe you can't quite reach the toes. Maybe you just grab hold of the kind of the right above the ankle or the shin. Whatever feels right for you. Beautiful. And then when you're ready, let's come back through center. Let's draw the knees in towards our chest. Let's take both our legs up to the sky. Finding our candlestick pose. Maybe from here, we go ahead and take our right leg nice and long to the right corner of the mat. And then the left leg to the left corner of the mat. Maybe if we're taking care of our back today, we prop our knees up on a bolster. Maybe we allow our arms to extend out to the side with the palms facing up towards the sun. Let us take a moment to remind ourselves of our intention today.
Notice the rise and fall of your belly. If your mind is wanting to pull you away into your to-do list, take that door and shut it. Allow this time to be a time to rest your mind and your body, to replenish your soul. As you're ready, let's begin to deepen the breath. If you feel like you need to stay in Shavasana a little longer, please do. Otherwise, let's begin to move our body and create some movement through the fingers and through the toes. Maybe take a good morning stretch with the arms outstretched overhead. And perhaps let's find ourselves on the side of our body, just kind of resting here through this transition time. And then as you're ready, we'll slowly make our way up into Sukhasana. Coming up into our seated position. Again, this is totally optional. You can stay there a little longer. But I've stolen a few extra minutes of your time, so I'm going to close this off. But if you feel you need some extra time there, please take it. Let's meet with our hands at heart center in Anjali Mudra as a symbol of us all being one and centered and balanced. Let's close this practice with a deep cleansing breath in through the nose and a big sigh out of the mouth, just releasing any sort of residual tension. So when you're ready, go ahead and take a big inhale to the belly. A big sigh out of the mouth. With a gentle bow of our head towards our hands in honor of the light that shines within us all. May your heart always stay warm. May your smile always stay broad. And may the light that shines in me honor and see the light that shines in you. Namaste. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you for always being part of this community and for kicking off the year with this Burn It Off class. From my heart to yours, as always, I'm truly grateful. I wish you a gorgeous day. My first heart of the year, thank you. I wish you a glorious day, everyone, and I hope to see you again this week. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.